Hey guys, Brandoni Productions here. And would you look at that? I'm making a video the day after I made an, uh, you know, another video. If that made sense. Yes, I am making two videos consecutively because I've been receiving equal amounts of questions about how to, uh, generate random numbers in an application. So say you want to make an application which pops up with random message boxes to spam the user. That that would that'd be pretty funny. Or to make a key generator, which I'm not saying you should use this to make a key generator. This is just an educational video, but I'm just saying it could be used for that. Yes, so if you wanted to know how to do that, here's your tutorial. So the tutorial is going to be on how to create random numbers, like from a selected group. Okay, so we're just going to name this random tutorial, because, you know, we are generating random things. So it's got to be a random tutorial. All right. So our form, it doesn't really matter what our form is here. So, but what we're going to do is we're going to have it pop up with message boxes with a different message, in e a random message in each message box, and just spam the user. But to prevent lag in the video, we're just going to make it so a message box uh, pops up on button press. So hopefully this is making sense to you. I'm sorry if I'm going a little fast. I can kind of feel myself talking fast. I'll <sighs> slow down. Okay. So since the random message boxes are going to pop up when the button is pressed, we're just going to type in the code for the button. Okay. So what we're going to do is every time the button is pressed, we're going to change text inside of a text box and then have the text inside of a text box messaged out as a message box. So the first thing we need to do is create a, t a text box. Now the text box does not want to be seen, so we're just going to be declare a variable as it. So we're just going to create text box 1 as a new text box. So this creates text box 1 as a text box. It's the same thing as the physical text box that we would drag is from the toolbox, but um, it's we're just leaving it as this so the user cannot see it. Now we start a thing called cases. Cases are how you generate random things from a specified vocabulary, if you if you will. So to start off the case command, we actually need to specify what we're going to change. So we're actually going to change the text of the text box. And then we use a command called int, which returns the integer portion of a number. Now, um, if, if you read that little tooltip right there, that's exactly where I got it from. But it pretty much just re returns an integer. So we're taking the integer of, now we need to get a random number, which is command rnd. So we're taking the integer of a random number. And then we're multiplying that random number by the number of cases we have. So we're just going to leave this as a pound symbol for now. So here we're changing the text to a the integer of a random number times the number of cases. This will make sense in a second. Now to actually start the case block, we need to use a command called select. So we're going to do select case, and then what we're changing. So text box one dot text. And then if you press enter, it automatically puts in the end of the uh, case block and select. So now we just need to put in our random things that we want to generate. So we're going to divide these into cases. They're just case, 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 case. We're going to have five. And then we need to number these cases. So the numbering works and it starts with zero and ends with whatever number you want to end it with. But you just put the number after the case, like space number. So we're just going to number ours right now. Whoops. Two. This is three. This is four. All right, so we have our case zero, one, two, three, four. And if we count these, one, two, three, four, five, we know we have five cases. So since we have five cases, we could just replace the pound sign with a five. So now that we have our cases divided up, the case actually decides a, well, this command is deciding a random number or a random case from this case block. Um, so it's deciding each a random, 
you know, case. Yeah. So what we need to do is actually specify what's inside each case. We can do this by simply typing what's in, what we want to be inside right under it. So if the random thing selects case 0, then we want to change the text of the text box to hello YouTube. If it selects case 1, we want to change the text of the text box to my name is Brandon. So on and so forth. I'm just going to if it selects case 2, I'm going to change the text of the text box to uh, Brandonia Productions text box one dot text equals a bunch of random numbers. That's always fun. And then for case four, text box one dot text equals I don't know George Washington. That's first president of the United States right there. Yeah, very important man. All right, so we have our coding set. So what it's doing is it's just picking random from all these cases, a random case, and putting the text of the text box into that. So we're changing the text of the text box. So once we finally end the cases and select what's inside the text box, we're just going to put a message box out with what's inside the text box. So we just use our message box code with the text box one dot text, the text inside the text box. So now if we run our program, nothing happens, but as soon as we press the button, we get a text box and notice, or a message box, and notice it has the numbers. This is case three. Now if we press it again, it has Brandonia Productions, which is case two. Oh, it has selected case two again. Now you gotta keep in mind, with the fewer the fewer amount of cases you have, the more likely it is to repeat cases. So now we have case one, case one again. Oh, and we're going back to case three. Oh, we've got case zero, case three. Oh, and we're, first time we've gotten case four. But yes. So you can just keep on doing this and it will keep generating random cases. Now, of course, you can always do what I like to do to sabotage my friends and just to take all this coding and instead of putting it on the button click, you can do this too, you know, prank people, put it as soon as the form loads. So as soon as the form loads, it's just going to generate a bunch of random numbers and put it in the message box. So we're about to get spammed right here. Oh. Okay, well, apparently you don't get spammed and it just pops up with one message box. I guess that makes sense. If you would really want to spam your friends, you could make this message box a loop. So we'll do until number equal, uh, this is just too complicated. We won't even do that. Oh, yes, we will. So we're going to do this until number equals 100. No, 100. We're going to go up here and dim number as integer. Number will equal zero. Number equals number plus one loop. Okay, so this is pretty much saying the number starts at zero, and every time a message box pops up, a uh, number is one unit higher. So it's going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and once it hits a hundred, uh, the message boxes stop popping up. So let's just do this real fast. Oh my goodness. Every time you press OK, the same one pops up. Okay, so if you put it in a loop, it doesn't really work that well. Yes, it does. It works great. But it's because we randomized when the form loaded. Okay, well, since I'm about out of time here, that is how you... Go away. <laughs> that is how you generate random things from a specified list. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you later.